There are winners and losers in inflation. Now we're going to go to Ray Dalio's book. It's a 400 page book. I'm going to take you the last 50 pages and speed it up. Here's the three biggest risks for investors because of inflation. Number one is portfolios won't provide enough returns to meet their spending needs. So what does that mean? It means you have an investment portfolio and let's say your dividends are 8% a year, but inflation's at nine, you're losing money. You're in a bad spot. Number two, straight up portfolios are ruined. So if you had a port investment portfolio in pre-Nazi Germany with the Weimar Republic, hyperinflation destroyed your entire portfolio if it was in paper assets. Same thing in Zimbabwe. And number three is that a large share of their wealth is taking away through taxation, government redistribution, and mostly inflation. So that's as people who are trying to become wealthy and financially free, those are the three biggest risks for us. Here's something interesting. As inflation gets worse, hard assets go up in value while paper assets go down in value. And so here was recommendations from Dalio. Here's what he thinks is gonna happen in the future is debts held and reserve currencies are growing too fast to be paid back with hard money. It's not like the United States government's gonna pay back its debt in gold. Money's gonna be printed to service that debt, which further perpetuates the inflationary issue. And then here's the real problem. To keep the economy greased and moving, interest rates are going to be held low, below inflationary rates and growth rates. So one way to stop is inflation, as we've seen, is to raise the interest rate. That slows everything down. It puts some more gas in the tank. But even though they've raised interest rates a lot in 2023, 2024, Dalio's contention is that governments over the long term are not going to be able to sustain high interest rates. So they're going to lower interest rates while inflation... So say interest rates are at five, inflation's at eight. That means the currency is going to get hammered and inflation is going to keep going up. And so this was particularly interesting from Dalio. And particularly, if you've thought I've been droning on in this video, pay attention again. This is the big risk is not that debtors are going to default on their debt. It's not going to be like the global financial crisis that everybody's defaulting on their debt. It's that the creditor's assets will lose value and that their returns will be less than inflation. So what does that mean? For example, if you get a 30-year mortgage from a bank and your interest rate's four and inflation's nine, that means you're paying that bank back with worthless currency. That's why my program works. That's why single family residential real estate works. It gets you access to cheap credit that is 30-year fixed and there's no way you're gonna, the lender is going to get the value back. So hopefully I'm gonna stress that one more time. Creditors' assets will lose value. That means if you're a lender, and you charge somebody a 5% interest rate and they pay back in five years, 5%, but inflation's been at 10, that creditor has lost a lot of value on that loan. So very interesting. It's not going to be the debtors that get hammered. It's going to be the creditors. I just went over the 30 year mortgage. The 30 year mortgages helps us get on the winning side of that, getting on the winning side of inflation. Savers are losers. If you're saving cash, it's getting destroyed by inflation. So here's the deal. What to do in light of this? Number one, protect against drop in financial assets. Protect against, what does that mean? Be in assets that don't get hammered if there's a dip in the stock market. Number two, protect against the devaluation of the dollar. What does that mean? It's you have to have some inflationary hedge. That's what it, real estate is. Here's why it's a hedge. Inflation works for us. You use leverage, you only have 20% down. As the house appreciates 5% a year, you get a higher and higher return on that 20% down. And now if you would put that cash in the bank, there's no way it's keeping up with inflation. But with a house, since you have leverage on it, and since inflation is going to drive up the price of that asset, you're winning. Same thing with rents. Rents are going to continue to go up with inflation. So your small 20 to 25% down payment, it is what it is, but you're going to get such a lever off that amount of money. That's how you beat inflation because your asset values rise and your rents rise. And your mortgage payment is the same. This is how the cash flow gap opens up. Is every year you raise the rent, your mortgage payment stays the same, but your rent payment keeps growing. And number three is to be more productive than the rise in interest rates. Generally, the solution to everything is be more productive. What you got to do is be more productive than the interest rates. And also to do that, you need to raise your financial IQ. Your number one job as an investor is to clearly articulate, develop, improve, and act on your decision-making criteria. You have to consider inflation on any long-term investment that you're making.